Round loops affect analog audio and video systems, whether the equipment is mounted in racks or out in the field. And as the name implies, it's all about grounding. This tutorial will show you what ground loops are and how they affect analog and video systems. The ground connection of an electrical system is used to protect the equipment and the people operating it. But as the saying goes, there are grounds and then there are grounds. The electrical resistance measured between two grounds shows that they are not the same. And when there is electrical resistance, there is a voltage drop or difference. The potential difference between two grounds is oftentimes of a significant amount. This means that there is a voltage difference between the two grounds. The AC plugs in your house or facility have a safety ground, which is connected to an earth ground at the electrical service entrance of the building. Whenever a three prong electrical plug is inserted into an outlet. The equipment's chassis or frame is connected directly to the earth ground at the electrical service entrance. If there's a difference between the grounds of two outlets, it can be measured with a voltmeter. Because they are both connected directly to earth ground, the difference should be small. But what's considered a small voltage difference for a safety ground can lead to problems for audio and video systems in the form of ground loops. The loop is where a voltage loops or returns through a ground. In the case of audio and video circuits, the return path is through the shield of the cable connecting two pieces of equipment that do not share the same electrical ground. The 60 cycle electrical power we use induces a slightly higher potential at one ground and when it's connected to a lower potential ground through the shield or ground of an audio or video cable, a 60 cycle voltage is induced and current flows through that audio or video shield. This current flow through the shield of the interconnecting cable causes the reference conductor, the signal ground, to fluctuate in potential or voltage. With the signal ground varying in voltage, the receiving equipment sees both the intended signal and the varying signal on the ground conductor. This is why you see and or hear a 60 cycle hum and know that you have a ground loop. Unbalanced interconnections between equipment lead to the problems associated with ground loops. When the shield of a cable is used to equalize the voltage between two grounds, a hum will be introduced into the signal being carried. Even video circuits are subject to ground loops. Of course you don't hear them, but you can see the video ground loops effect in the light and dark bands rolling up or down the screen and in the waveform monitor display. Balanced circuits, on the other hand, eliminate this potential problem by keeping the second signal conductor separate from earth or chassis ground. Even if there is a ground potential difference, it does not affect the signal. The best way to prevent ground loops is by using a centralized grounding system in your facility. All grounds are connected to a single point that has a very low resistance to earth ground.
But you don't always have control of the grounds connected to your system, and you must deal with ground loops out in the field. In that case, you need to remove the ground. Just don't cut off the safety ground. There are better ways. Sometimes the ground carried by a balanced connection can lead to a ground loop problem with another piece of equipment because it's connected via an unbalanced cable. In this case, breaking the ground connection of the balance line will eliminate the ground loop. To do this, you can use an adapter like this one that separates the grounds and does not connect them. But for unbalanced connections, there is only one way to overcome a ground loop, and that is by the use of transformers. The transformer eliminates the path for the ground loop. Here are a couple of examples of audio transformers for unbalanced audio. Of course, when adapting from a balanced output to an unbalanced input, or from an unbalanced output to a balanced input, the grounds will be connected unless an isolating transformer is used. Here's a typical example with an audio board that is plugged into an outlet which uses ground number one and the audio amp which is plugged into an outlet that uses ground number two. Even with the ground potential difference between the outlets, there is no ground loop hum because a balanced connection is used between the two. In this next case, an unbalanced connection is used between the mixer and the amplifier, creating a ground loop that can be heard. To remedy this situation, an isolation transformer between the audio in and out should be used, thus disconnecting the ground, as shown here. Another way to eliminate the ground loop hum is to connect a large gauge grounding wire between the mixer and the amplifier. This will give the ground loop current a lower resistance path to travel rather than over the shield of the audio cable. Sometimes the quickest way to get rid of a ground loop hum is to just get rid of the ground. But lifting or removing the electrical safety ground on a plug is never a good idea, as it exposes you to the risk of electrical shock. But if you have to, use a ground lifting adapter and don't cut off the ground pin. Ground lift switches can be found on some professional audio equipment. These switches work in one of two ways. In the past, the ground lift switch would disconnect the safety ground, the one from the AC cord, that goes to the chassis ground, thus preventing any ground loops. But this also makes the equipment unsafe by disconnecting the safety ground. Better designs use a ground lift switch to disconnect the pin one ground on the balanced XLR connector, thus isolating the safety ground from the ground of the equipment connected to it through the balanced line. 